Auto is a CSS value that has a number of uses. It's the default value for a lot of box model properties like width, height, margin and background size. It's also the default value for position properties like top and bottom, left and right and z-index. There's other more obscure places that auto can be used as well like overflow, cursor, table layout and the column width property of CSS columns. Broadly speaking, the value of auto is automatically computed by the user agent. And the specific effect depends on the content and the context that it's used in. Let's have a look at an example. With the default value of auto applied to the width and the height of a div containing some dummy text, the dimensions of the box are automatically calculated and the box fills the width of the page and is as high as necessary to contain all the content. It's worth noting that the width and height auto don't need to be declared but have been added here to illustrate the point. Under these circumstances, when the window is resized, the available space for the div is reduced and its dimensions are automatically recalculated to accommodate the content. This is the default behavior for any block level element and we'll take a closer look at this in episode four, display. While auto is the default value in many cases, sometimes we want to use it specifically to achieve a certain effect. A very common design pattern on the web is to center a block of content and often the whole website over a certain width. This can be achieved by setting a max width on a wrapper element and setting margin auto on the left and right hand side. When we set margin left auto, the browser adds as much margin to the left hand side as there's space for, and the box moves to the right until its rightmost edge aligns with its containing element. When we do the same on the right hand side, the same thing happens but in the opposite direction, and the box moves as far back to the left as it can go. Because there are now equal margins on each side, the box remains centered on the page. It's a shame that this trick doesn't work with vertical centering, but we'll be tackling this in a later video. A div with width auto expands to fill the width of its parent, but there's an important difference between width auto and width 100%. If we have a div with width and height auto and some padding on the inside, the width is automatically calculated and takes the padding into account. If we change width auto to width 100%, the box breaks out of its container and everything looks broken. This is because width 100% sets the width of our div to 100% of the width of its parent, and then the padding is added additionally. This makes the width of our div 100% plus 50 pixels on the left plus 50 pixels on the right, which is wider than the viewport. A workaround is either to use auto or the box sizing border box model, where padding and border are added within the width of the box. The next episode is all about the CSS box model, so be sure to check that out for more information. Sometimes using box sizing isn't an option, so this is a handy tool to have in the box. Another place where auto can come to the rescue is when using CSS positioning. Imagine a situation with an element positioned in the top left corner of a box. Let's say that at a certain width, we want the same element to be in the bottom right corner instead. I've changed the background color to show that the media query does get fired, but it seems that setting bottom or right zero is having no effect. This is because top and left take precedence over bottom and right if they're all set. To make this work, we first have to remove the effect of top and left by setting them to auto. And now everything works as expected.